this stuff's moving so fast, nobody even knows what it can do. And then Dali hit, and it was like, oh my god, you are not going to pry bar me out of here. Firefly, it, it sounds like a model, but of course, in reality, it's many different models. Are we going to have Firefly standalone as a product? Or no, we are going to have Firefly embedded into every single product suit that Adobe has? Or this is still a big question that you guys are figuring out. I don't know that there's a world where the exact same number of what we currently consider creative jobs stays the same. The value I would provide is trying to be a good storyteller. How big is the AI team currently at Adobe? Adobe can or should try to do everything. I think that's an insane approach. Uh, he's been at Adobe since, I want to say, probably 1985, maybe even earlier. Wow. And wow. Um, we didn't solve a problem, we avoided a problem. If the way we get there best is a lot of people come at it and they compete with each other, they compete with us and vice versa, Great, let's do it. Three, two, one. Let's go. Everybody, welcome back to the Bad Decisions Podcast, where we give you guys a backstage pass into the minds and brains of creatives, entrepreneurs, and visionaries from all domains. And today, we are going to the world of artificial intelligence, and especially because we have the principal product manager of Adobe here with us today. For the most part of the past 23 years, he's been with Adobe, working on critical components that you probably have experience with, like Adobe Camera Raw, Smart Objects, Content an aware feel and he was also inducted into the photoshop hall of fame and today he's playing a major role in the adobe ai team we have john knack in the house today john knack what's up guys thank you so much that is that is too kind an intro and and i mean that literally <laughs> because um as as you may guess at a big company like adobe there are a lot of people directing the vision and <laughs> and so i say this with no false modesty it, it's funny because my friend deke uh did a uh interview with me a couple months ago and uh he put uh on the, the poster screen john neck head of ai at adobe and i was like oh my god like i will never <laughs> i will never live this down with all the people who are way above me in the org chart so i am but i am very lucky i i am i'm just you know one of the one of the product managers um it, it is one of those like it really takes a village kind of things and uh I mean, it, it's really been a fun ride. I mean, we get to see everything from like data gathering and annotation to training to all the folks who are doing infrastructure. There's people building, you know, user interfaces. There's people doing the pricing, um, getting good deals with cloud compute. So I, I just say all that by way of like very uh, genuinely humble uh, intro and, and say, yeah, where, where I get to sit is trying to help people make the world more beautiful and fun like that's kind of what it boils down to and and you're right you know when you, when you mention um, passion it's interesting one of the one of the guys who really inspires me is named russell brown uh, he's been in adobe since i want to say probably 1985 maybe even earlier wow. Wow. and um you know it, it's like if i had one flex if i could say yeah i there were four names on the photoshop 10 splash screen and one of them is mine <laughs> um i i you know that that would be true if I were Russell. Um, but, <laughs> but what's what's cool when when you see him and, and other people like him is, um, you know, even though they've kind of done everything by this point, they're still so wildly enthusiastic. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like for a lot of us, um, I mean, my wife included, I'm, I'm sitting at her desk up in Colorado. She worked at Adobe for 12 years. And before Dali came out last year, I think we were both kind of in this, I don't know, lull. It was sort of like, yeah, I came back to Adobe to work on AI first creativity. I'd been at Google. I met guys like Balaval, which was really inspiring. But it, it felt like things had just kind of flattened out. Everything was getting like really incremental. And it's like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. you know, here's another keyboard shortcut for you or something. And it's like, eh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Couldn't I have done this 20 years ago in a copy of, of my tools? And then Dali hit, and it was like, oh, my God, you are not going to pry bar me out of here. Um, th this is <laughs> like, I hope I still have some runway left. And, and Challenge, it's, I accept it. <laughs> right, right. And and what's so cool, with, and uh, just to circle back quickly to, to Russell, obviously, he was around, you know, when, if you ever see those, like, original Photoshop demos, it's like, you know, black and white in, in some cases. It, you know, everything takes five minutes to run a Gaussian blur or whatever. Um <laughs> And so he remembers what a big deal it was when layers came out, you know, before layers, you guys, I'm sure are too young, but um, <laughs> it was like to do a drop shadow was like this pro operation, you know, it was like, because it was like, 
People don't remember this, but I mean, for the first eight years of Photoshop, there was one level of undo, right? So like if you did something, right, and then you like clicked oh away, goodness. I know, like, so you just like, you did something and deselected, that's it. Because all you could do is like reselect, but you couldn't even go back one more step. <laughs> and, uh, you know, text wasn't editable. So if you wanted to make text with a drop shadow, it was like, it you were like a high wire acrobat. You know, it's like, okay, so I guess, <laughs> right? Like, okay, don't, don't screw up. Like open this up, try this. Okay. Mm. You know, command J float the thing. And, mm. and so for, for Russell, he's, he's so, so, uh, wildly excited. You can see it in these videos. I should, I should share some with you guys so you can, I'll put them, put them out for folks who want them. But, uh, yeah, he's like, this is like when layers hit and that was 30 years ago, you know? So, and, and I feel the same. It is, it is that kind of step change. And, and what's crazy is that we're just a year into it. I mean, not even a year in, into Adobe, we're like three months in. And I was tweeting the other day, like, I'm old enough to remember when we launched generative fill, right? Like, <laughs> That's March, 2020. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so, um, and people just these last days have been posting comparisons with Midjourney from like July of 2022 versus July 2023, and it's it's insane. Of course, a year ago we thought that was insane, and it was because you've never mm -hmm. seen anything like it. And yet now it's like people are doing zooms in on like the corneas of people who don't mm -hmm. exist, and um, so yeah, I, I I brought my my soda here because of course I get so excited. Uh, you know, talking, I, I, I like, and it's also very thin air up here, I should note. Uh, so I will certainly, certainly um, run out of steam. And, but that's good, because then I can let you guys get a word in. So that's you my know, intro. So many, so many beautiful things that I can just touch on based on what you just mentioned. The one thing I want to talk about is, and I think a lot of people will have questions based on, based on this before we talk about your passion and the concept of burnout, which is something I want to cover. Because mm -hmm. clearly, after working for so many years, yeah. you're more excited than ever before, which you don't tend to see in a lot of people. We'll get back to this. Can we just go back to the very beginning? You mentioned there's a lot of people working you know, at Adobe right now, specifically on AI. What is the numbers like? Maybe not an exact number, but how big is the AI team currently at Adobe? Well, it's a really good question. And... I don't actually have an answer. Well, a, a reasonable one. I can make some guesses, mm. but but part of where it's hard to answer, and I think this is actually a good problem to have, is there's so many teams now who are kind of rethinking their roadmaps and saying, mm. well, of course, you know, we customer needs many times don't really change. It's like, you know, what's the process of telling a good story? Or like, how would you mm. structure a film shoot? Or, you know, how could you convey your ideas um, in an illustrated way, right? A lot of the stuff goes back to Aristotle. You know, you can look at the mm -hmm. arc of like what makes good tension. And so, mm -hmm. so those things don't necessarily change. Obviously what's changed is our ability to, uh, provide tools and structures that people could then use. And, and even though some are still outside our grasp, you know, I'm sure you guys see where people are synthesizing video strictly from text. Mm -hmm. And there's all of these, uh, what we call multimodal inputs, where mm -hmm. you know you can mix in sketches, you can mix in photos, depth, uh, video content, um, 3D is, is extremely exciting. And so because all that is moving so quickly, I think you're seeing a lot of teams say, well, yeah, of course we're not gonna forget the basics because you know just to get excited and only do AI would be, would be crazy. But, but they're also spinning up a lot of little internal prototypes and saying like, well, gosh, okay, if Photoshop can do that, you know, what can we do over here? Uh, by the way, one thing that was always uh, amusing to me back in the day when I worked on, on Photoshop full time was uh, the After Effects team, who I love. These, I mean, if you want to talk about people who are like an incredible ratio between like accomplishment and humility, like look no further. Mm -hmm. They are like incredibly down to earth, very sweet, sweet folks. Um, but I would go on stage internally in demos and I'd be like, hey, check out this cool Photoshop thing. And, you know, people would applaud. Mm -hmm. It was very exciting. And then like two seconds <laughs> later, the After Effects folks would come up and they're like, hey, that's really cool. But what if it moved? And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, no, guys, no. like, can we just have like a second day for video? And then <laughs> and then I could just Not have... have it on the same day. Yeah, there yeah, you go. It's so cold blooded. And, and they would come right up after me. And uh, anyway, so. So I, I say that just because these folks and others are, are thinking, like, what is the next evolution? Like, how do you make things temporally coherent, right? Like, a lot of the cool video stuff we've seen today is is neat, but, um, you know, it, it's a lot of, like, flickering, and, and it's a novel effect. Mm -hmm. But, of course, that kind of burns out. Just like, you know, mm -hmm. if, if, like, paint box effects in the 80s. It was like, oh, my God, like, a little squiggle went by. Um, 
but but of course then it's you can only do that so many times and so so anyway yes it's an extremely long-winded way of saying a lot of product teams are are thinking about how they should intersect with ai then there's also just a lot of growth in teams building the infrastructure so mm-hmm. I mean, when we say Firefly, it, it sounds like a model, but of course, in reality, it's many different models. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's like the core model and that's evolving. And, and so there's like various versions we're trying like, well, you know, if, if we constrain it in this way, you know, if we can only access these data sources, how should we do that? Or is there data we can add that would make it better? How would you know? That takes a while. Then there's things like multi-diffusion, which is what uh, generative fill uses. And that conditions on surrounding pixels. And then there's things where people are playing with technologies like control net, where you can use, you know, edges, you can use depth, you can use these other uh, signals. And then, of course, there's how do they combine? And it's like, oh, well, could you do multi-diffusion with depth? And I, I don't know. Could we? Yeah. And, and <laughs> so <try. laughs> let's try, right? And, and as a result, there are um, there are so many promising ideas that are all kind of competing for bandwidth, literal, mm-hmm. you know, bandwidth, just in terms of like how many GPUs can we get and how can we train efficiently and then sort of just engine testing band, uh, bandwidth. Because, you know, when we, we do these things, one of the really important dimensions is making sure they're fair. And, and by fair, you know, we mean sort of aligns with the values of, of the company and with, with, you know, most of the creative people we meet where, you know, um, we want to make sure that uh, the quality of an edit is equally good, whether you know you're young or old, light skin, dark skin, heavy, thin, whatever the the human diversity might be. We want to do a good job for everybody, right? And so that takes a ton of time. Um, you know, back when I was at Google, we were working on um, meshes for faces. In fact, just a side note: I saw my my Google teammates uh, put out some new stuff on that yesterday where we're like they're feeding the meshes in i'm like oh my god guys i'm on vacation like i i, I but i'm like am, am i supposed to be reading these github anyway we'll leave that aside so so you know back in the day being like four years ago right uh, ancient history uh we were working on um mesh fitting for for faces and right you know there again it, it seems like a simple thing but we really wanted to take the time to say okay you know can we kind of uh, get these big data sets and slice by geography which is an imperfect um, measure, but at least mm-hmm. it's a proxy for, you know, differing appearances among humans and, and make sure that like the error rate we detect is within um, the error rate of, of a normal human, like hand annotating something. Mm-hmm. And, and all of that stuff goes on behind the scenes. Uh, it's easy to skip for sure. And, and it's one of the reasons that it's, it's not hard probably for other people to bring things to market quickly. It's, it's not a, a, a criticism. It's just saying, really spending the time on that long tail of of development and testing um is really important and it is one of the key the key things that has to happen before you like roll something out in photoshop um Mm -hmm. but anyway that's one of the many reasons that there's an awful lot of people who are now working really hard on all these pieces of the puzzle Mm -hmm. but having all these ai tools coming in and with all the research that you guys are doing are you guys reframing the product suits as well like how is going to look in the future are we going to have Firefly standalone as a product or no, we are going to have Firefly embedded into every single product suit that Adobe has, or this is still a big question that you guys are figuring out. It, it is a big question. It's a great question. Um, you know, the thing is obviously in order to, to get to keep playing this game, right. Where that is, you know, I get to keep coming to work and working with these awesome people. We have to make some money on it and make sure it's like a, re- a real business. And therefore we have to align with, what we believe people care about and are willing to pay for. And we have to do it in a way that's thoughtful where, you know, it's not like we've traded dollars for pennies and it's like, Hey, good job. Like here's an amazing Photoshop feature, but it's also over here for free. You know, like Mm -hmm. I I think it's a very solvable problem, right? There are really good reasons. Some people go to Photoshop and there's really good reasons. Some don't. Um, There's tools like Adobe express, you know, again, this is a, a tangent, but, um, we were at a 4th of July thing yesterday, met a super interesting guy at the airport who had just flown in. Uh, he he does like remote undersea vehicle stuff, like super random, but um, obviously a pretty techie guy. And he was trying to show us some, some photos he had from one of these adventures with the Discovery Channel. And I was sitting there quietly and he's using his phone and he's like scrolling and scrolling. And 
I felt like Dr. Strangelove where like my hand keeps like trying to fly up and you know, like, <laughs> grab the phone. And I'm like, oh, but I have to be polite. I don't know this guy. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, have you considered searching? And he's like, <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, anyway, I just keep going. And I'm like, I'm like, well, is that Apple or Google? Because Google, you know, photos is like really good at searching and you can back up for free. Mm. And, and, um, <laughs> and, you know, an Apple like indexes text, right? So even if there's like a word in, in a sign in the background, it'll often find it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and yet the guy wouldn't do it. And, and the same goes for editing, right? And so I, I this is again, a, it's a very elliptical way of saying some people don't need or want to do that. And, and I said, you know, on a given day, of all the people who use Google Photos, I, this is an old stat, but I, I bet you it's still true. Ninety-seven mm. percent do not ever hit the edit button, not once. And yeah. of the ones who hit it, they edit two to maybe three photos tops, and those edits are basically the auto button and crop, right? And so mm. all of the stuff that I, you know, this was a this is why it was weird for me to go to Google, and it's weird. I I'm very stubborn, which is why I lasted as long as I did. But mm. uh, but fundamentally, like if you're trying to make products for a billion people, it's okay. They they don't. They don't need to want to do that. It's all right. Like if you can run an auto enhancement, maybe sometimes you can make them a thing. That's cool. It really doesn't matter compared to like the cold launch time of the Android app, um, which I actually have the receipts on this. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I got into all this just to say that, um, you know, as we're thinking about the Adobe product line, you want to make sure you're serving folks where they are, right? You, you want to give them an on-ramp if, if for the you know percentage of people who want to move from one product to another, you know, maybe back in the day, they would have started with um, Photoshop elements, and then they move up to, to full Photoshop. But, but I know I'm, I'm way off topic to bring it back. Uh, I think what you'll see with the Firefly site is I'm, 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 I'm literally like uh, playing hooky on my own vacation and writing up this, mm -hmm. this vision for the team. Like, it's not to say it's the only vision, maybe, maybe folks won't, won't agree, but I think, I think they will insofar as we know we want to um, inspire right? Like whether you're a pro, whether you're a, a newcomer, you know, whether you're like a serious user, or just, you just want to have fun. This stuff's moving so fast. Nobody even knows what it can do. So like, let's, mm -hmm. let's welcome everybody in. Maybe they've never heard of Firefly. They've never heard of Photoshop. They've never heard of Adobe. Or if they have, it's like, I don't know. I think my cousin uses that. She's a graphic designer. It sounds like really cool, but really hard, right? Like we, we want to mm -hmm. reframe it and say, no, like you can use this tech to come in and do incredible things. If you want to do that as a creative pro, great. Like, let me show you some stuff you can use right away. And I'm not even talking like make a full image. I'm just talking like little bite-sized pieces, like recolor a vector or like maybe make a texture or just like change the aspect ratio on a photo. Um, and then for for more more newcomer folks, like, could this be almost more like a game? Like game's kind of a four-letter word, you know, and you don't want to make it seem like, oh, this is we're doing Angry Birds or Snapchat. But, but game in the sense of like, things that are fun, like Pictionary, you know, or Telestrations or Charades or, you know, fill in the blank and just give folks a really, a really simple, but, but, um, constructive way to kind of get their feet wet. And then mm -hmm. after all of that, to answer your question, I think there's still, I think there's room, there's plenty of room to put cool tech into the tools folks use today. There's also really a lot of white space, so to speak, around these new experiences, like how does one get inspired? How do you manage the stuff you create? You know, you meet people who use Midjourney; they're dropping a hundred bucks a month in, in uh, cloud compute. They're generating thousands of images, which is delightful and amazing. But then they're like, "Oh my god, I think I had like a was it a chicken made of armor? And where did that go?" <laughs> you know, so so all of these new uh, these new possibilities emerge, and and I think we'll see a, a sort of a hybrid world where where we have new tech and new, new product experiences. And then hopefully if we do our job, right, those really dovetail with the, the sort of creative ecosystem that lives in today's apps. Mm -hmm. First of all, can we just say congratulations to you and the team? Because you guys definitely knocked it out of the park when Dolly and mid journey and, you know, runway ML and all these came about all of the stuff we were hearing from the community as people who are not, part of adobe um was oh this is the photoshop killer this is gonna like where is adobe what, what what are they doing about this because clearly you guys are the ones that people would have wanted to see creatives would have wanted to be able to use these tools within photoshop because exactly like you mentioned the problem is if i want to use mid journey as great as great the tool is you still have to go to Discord. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. a lot of the people that I know don't have Discord servers right, right. or Discord accounts. You have to type in slash imagine, which is something I believe you also mentioned in, in somewhere where like 
there has to be easier ways than, you know, tips and tricks that you have to look online to figure out how to get to the image. Totally. It has to be a lot simpler than that. And then what do you do after you create the image? The problem is exactly like you mentioned, so many people are using these tools, but then all they do is they create the image and that's it. It stops right there. What are you going to do with that image? Are you going to actually use it? Right. And the applications is what's important. And clearly Adobe is in the most advantageous and privileged position to be using these tools because you guys have already every single possible, you know, application. You have audio, you have video, you have photo, you have 3D, which is the one that we're going to get into because that's what we're interested in. But I guess what I want to get back to is a similar question, but how much of the old, so clearly I would like to get your opinion in, in terms of Photoshop first and then outside of Photoshop, since you have the most experience in that software, how much of the old Photoshop are we going to see in the future, in the new Photoshop, because clearly with all the text prompts and eventually maybe it's even voice, you're going to be simplifying things, right? Mm-hmm, you don't need mm-hmm, to have mm-hmm. all the depth of the tools. And maybe that's also the, the the issue that is causing a lot of people not joining in Photoshop because it might be too confusing for them maybe. Sure. So do you think we're going to see a lot more simplified softwares with Adobe in the future? I, I think so. But I think this is what what makes it really fun to develop these tools. You know, it's like, um, so I, I had this joke for years and, and um, I, I made the same joke at Google because big companies are big companies. They're very frustrating. Uh, they're amazing. <laughs> they, they can do amazing things, which is why, you know, we put up with them. It's, it's like Churchill said about democracy. It's the worst system except for everything else we've tried, you know? So I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. fine. Um, but you know, I've got, <laughs> I've got this can of Coke here. And, and I used to say, if you asked Adobe, like, all of Adobe, like 30,000 people, like move this can of Coke. You'd be sitting there for six months and it would be like, you know, which de- VP is debating? Like, should we be in the fluid transportation business? And like, what are the mm-hmm. optics of high fructose corn syrup? I don't think that aligns with our brand <laughs> values. And like, or, or you could grab the Coke and you just move the Coke and then it, then it would be moved. And, and sometimes I feel like um, that's true with tech where you know, I was I was looking at some some really neat stuff from an, another team. They're doing all this like semantic segmentation, you know, and, and you've seen this in other tools. Like there's the the meta segment any anything model, yeah. and th- a the lot of this, model, yeah, yeah, and, and a lot of it is in um, in Photoshop today in various forms, right? You have like select subject. In fact, it's funny you can kind of like carbon date someone when they learned our tools by the techniques they use and yeah. like somebody my age it's like oh yeah select subject i forgot about that but like you'll see somebody using the pen tool from like 1991 right and you're like really bro and they're like hey man it works i know how to do it don't mess with me <laughs> I'm like anyway so all the semantic stuff is brilliant but i think it it continues to coexist with the pen tool or with the lasso or with you know channel based selections not because um it's just because people get you know, habituated and they're happy with what they had. But sometimes those tools are just the best way to do something. You know, they, um, they're simple, they're straightforward. They do exactly what you said. They don't do anything smart, so to speak. Mm. And, you know, selection is one of those things where it'll be like almost right. You know, it'll be like 95% right. But then there's like a chunk of like a, you know, if I was doing like the virtual background, like, like the dresser would pop in and it'd be stuck in, yeah. out of my head, you know? And, and so with a lot of the, um, the the classical tools, if you want to say, uh, those are still valuable. In fact, many years ago, we visited DreamWorks uh, Animation. And of course, you know, this was like early 2000s, but still they were doing like incredible production pipelines. And as I recall, they were using After Effects. And I thought, oh gosh, you know, the 3D stuff in After Effects, especially then was really limited. And they're like, oh yeah, we're, that's not what we're using. We're just using it as basically Photoshop on wheels, you know, because it's sometimes the simplest and most effective thing. We don't want to like, put this thing like way up at the head of the stream and re-render all this pipeline and like try to make it brighter. It's like, why not just put like a little track mat on that and then make it brighter, you know? And it's just like, Mm -hmm. maybe it's a quad of four points or it's a little thing and you just kind of shape it. And then you're like putting in like a levels adjustment. And, and, and sometimes um, even if those things seem low tech compared to like the the greatest new AI, they're great. Um, you know, some of the some of the brilliant stuff you see today is people combining Mid Journey and Photoshop. And mm-hmm. you know, they'll they'll use some of the new stuff like generative fill and they'll extend and, and that's awesome. But they'll also just use like old school selection, layers, blending modes, traditional stuff. In fact, when 
when Dali first emerged, that was to me the starting gun. Like, then, okay, this has gone from like mm-hmm. theoretical and papers. And we were playing around with some like diffusion models. But it, if you guys go back that far, again, you know, like 15 months, uh, <laughs> it, it was stuff like, you know, disco diffusion. And, and I remember, you know, I'll, I'll always remember this now, like watching my friend, like we were on a, a Zoom call together and like taking 15 minutes. And it's like, oh, I think I saw a face. Like, and, you know, then yeah. it was, yeah, right. But, but Dolly was where it was like, okay, boom, this is now practical, right? Or it, at least it's good enough to criticize in a lot of cases. And um, gosh, how did I get off on this? Uh, I, I guess, I, oh, the, the thing was, I wrote a, a doc called Yes And. And, and I wrote mm. it. So that's like kind of the cardinal rule of improv comedy, right? It's like, mm. uh, you, you, you're the friend walks on the stage and you have no idea what the plan is. And they're like, what's up, uh, brother? It's great to be here on Mars. And you're not like, well, we're not on Mars. Actually, we're, uh, you know, it's like that just kills the yeah. vibe, right? So for me, the analogy is not that Adobe can or should try to do everything. I think that's an insane approach. Um, what what we really want is, like, as long as we're making a living and get to do what we're doing, awesome. Uh, I just want to provide you know, these, these interfaces and hooks and platforms. Um, our friend Christian Cantrell, he worked at, at Adobe for about 20 years. He left last summer and he's a screenwriter. So he's kind of going off and doing his own thing, which is great. And as he was leaving, he made a Photoshop uh, panel, which talks to uh, Dolly and talks to Stable Diffusion. And so well in advance of us being able to like do a deep native integration, it was possible for people to put those in. I've seen people do that with like automatic 1111 and like tie into control net. And these incredible videos where people do a sketch and it like turns into a witch in the sky. And so, wow. Yeah. And, and, um, I get excited because if we can just stay out of the way fundamentally, mm-hmm. then I think good things will happen. Some of the stuff we've got to bring to the party for sure. And some of the doors like for better or worse, technically only we can open because they're like deeply wound into the products. But beyond that, I just want it where it's like, hey, you. I, this is what I used to do as a designer. I'd string together, you know, 10 weird apps just for the pleasure of like, A, solving the problem, and then B, getting something nobody else could do. They're like, how did you do that, man? And so, mm-hmm. so I think what will happen is even as a lot of hard stuff becomes easy, it doesn't change who people are. They're still going to be ambitious, mm-hmm. right? They're still going to want to set themselves apart. And, and that's where they'll just fill the time doing things they would have been completely out of the question. It's like, well, let me see. Mm. Let me see 10 variations of that. Anyway, I'm talking, I'm, I'm monologuing as I do. Let me stop because uh, I'm sure you guys have more thoughts. No, it's, it's very interesting, the points that mm. you brought up, actually. And, and it makes me think because... Again, Adobe has a lot of users from different ranges. Like you yeah. have people who use their smartphone to take photos and then edit it in Photoshop. Mm-hmm. You have people who use After Effects, Premiere Pro. You have people who use 3D objects in Adobe Substance Painter. Yeah. When you are thinking about AI creative tools and when you want to design these products, do you guys have a focus group or do you guys have a target? How do you guys design a target audience? Yeah, I, I know. I used to be a product yeah. manager before mm, YouTube mm. and before this podcasting. And I used to be a product manager for a fintech company. Mm. We used to do digital onboarding. And our goal was very simple. So we had to design products for people who visit the bank. Mm. They wanted loan and we know who our target audience is. So it was easy to, you know, design the product, design the features. But when I think of you guys, you guys have a wide range. The of entire users. world per se. Like, How right. do you guys manage that? Well, it, it's a great question. And especially when you work sort of at a core level, like with the Firefly models, yeah. um, it ends up being this really interesting sort of hub and spoke exercise. And, you know, part of part of the job of being a, a product manager is largely knowing who to talk to or knowing who to connect with. It's not necessarily knowing the answer. It's like knowing how to get the answer. Um, my old uh, manager at Google said, uh, a PM is basically an expensive router. It's like, yeah, there's some truth to that. It's not the whole story, but it's a lot of the story. And so, like, as we think about, um, I don't know, let's pick generative fill or something. Mm-hmm. A lot, like, I don't, as, as much as it this kind of kills me, I don't get to spend as much time directly talking to people as I wish. One thing we can do is, like, know the After Effects PMs, know the Adobe Express PMs, know the folks on Photoshop. Um, and And they all really focus on their their areas. I mean, even in those cases, it's hard because 
you know, think of the diversity of people who use Photoshop, even in something like After Effects. Like, okay, that's just like, it's, it's nerds being nerds. It's like, but do you mean visual effects nerds? Do you mean special effects? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or, or like motion graph people or sorry, you know, anyway. So, so a lot of it is kind of like building up this like federated mental model in, in your head. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I, I always emphasize is um, it, you can do like sell it and then build it. Right. That's sort of like one of the, the axioms of lean startup where instead of creating the whole thing, come up with the concept. If you can't do that, don't, there's no point in like coding. Why would, you know, like, yeah. like Amazon always says, write the press release first. And I have an intern this summer. She's amazing. And this is one of the things we're working on. It's like, Hey, if, if we're, if we're helping people creatively ideate and think about like, all right, you know, today you type in a prompt, you hit go, you get four pictures, then you, you change some settings, you hit go, you hit four pictures. It works, right? But it only works to a degree. Like we said, you know, if it's, yeah. it's mid journey, people get thousands of things. And what do I do with those? Or, you know, how could I more efficiently visualize? So we have some ideas. We don't know if they're good ideas or not. I mean, there's ways I could think of them tipping over. So one thing we can do is like describe, describe the end state, you know, describe like who, who is your customer? by virtue of having used this. Uh, there's a great essay folks may have read called uh, We Don't Sell Saddles Here by Stuart Butterfield, who was um, first, you know, created Flickr and then even more famously created Slack. And it's just, it's such an incredible um, description of like what we're really trying to do. And and it, a lot of it is like, it make, it, it's sort of obvious once you read it, but it's like, we're not selling you a saddle. Like, let's say we actually make saddles for horses. Like, we don't sell you the saddle. What we sell you is like, you guys on the, the, the beach, of, the dream, yeah. the best version of you, the one who's like with friends looking at the ocean and like having a campfire. Mm. And then it's like, God, I got to be that guy. Like, what do I need? Well, mm. you know, maybe get a horse and then can I recommend a good saddle? And you're like, give me the saddle. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and so, yeah. so with the creative ideation thing, it's like, you know, who do we want folks to be because of what we delivered? Right. It's like, I want you to be, more creatively satisfied. I want you to be more chilled out. I want you to have met a deadline that you, you couldn't have hit otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe some, what are the things we have to guard against? You know, is, is it like people became overwhelmed because we gave them too many versions too easily? And, and if you can kind of distill that, then it, it becomes possible to sort of write a press release. It becomes possible to work with design partners in playing with these ideas and, and taking them in different, different directions. And then ultimately, if, if we can do our job, you know, in its best form, it's like, we didn't solve a problem. We avoided a problem, right? Because we, we were able to make the vision so clear that we could actually test it. And if parts of it were bad, oh my God, you'd so much rather find out up at the jump, you know, it's a hundred times cheaper, a million times cheaper than if you went and, and delivered this thing and then you got to unwind it. Mm -hmm. So, so to me, um, I, there is no substitute for interacting with people. I, I mean, my blog mm -hmm. is almost legally able to vote at this point. Uh, <laughs> it's also in, in blog years. It's like an 18 year old dog. It's like, you know, it's, it's moving service provider keeps falling over and people are like, you know, your certificate is bad. I'm like, I know, man, I, I just, <laughs> whatever. It's, it's an old dog. Like just try to be nice. Um, but, but I do those things just as a, some, some way, some proxy for like staying in the community. Twitter has been a great tool for all the complaining I can do about Twitter. But, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think, I think for me that the enthusiasm and everything comes from the fact that this isn't, this isn't just like a side hustle. That's one of the things about Google. Like it's, it's an amazing place to go be a technologist, right? People that, mm. oh, I, I learned Python and C++ and then I took an MBA class and like, I'm going to go be a PM. And then it's like, what will you work on? Who knows? You just got hired at Google and like, you'll work on payments and then you'll work on 3D and then you'll work on maps. And it's like, and you're just like leveling up your skills and you're moving up in the career. But it's not really, for most people, anchored in a thing. And for me, mm. it, it's more like there's that song, The Distance by Cake, about this crazy guy who's a you know race car driver. And it's like, everyone's gone, man. Like the race is over, but he's like, he's just still going and going and going because he's insane, you know? And mm. and it's like, that's the, um, that's the kind of weirdos I tend to find more at Adobe. Uh, like <laughs> Russell, right? Russell could have bounced... 30 years ago and be on an island and be a, mm. a chill guy. But that's not what he wants. He, he, this stuff is too cool. Why, how could you not be part of it? So, Is that the reason you stayed for so long in Adobe and then you went back? 
Is, yeah, is that the, exactly, exactly. So th that's the reason, right? He, yeah, well, and, and the question you asked earlier kind of got at part of it, which was like, well, do we think we'll just sort of do incremental extensions to existing tools, which I think, again, makes tons of sense, like generative fill. It's like, great, I didn't want to relearn something. I didn't want to get into a new app. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the app I used to work better, and now it does. I did mm -hmm. this yesterday. There was like these donkeys running on the street in front of us. Like, it's a very interesting place. But there was also like this mm -hmm. irritating car, and I'm like, yeah, I could content or fill that, but what? Like I used gender to fill and it was like way better. So, so the incremental stuff is cool. But the reason I came back was they were talking about AI first creativity. And what is that? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, well, we don't know either, but like want to fool around and find out and we can try to make something cool. And I'm like, all right. And so um, I, I think both, I think both will happen. You know, just this morning, I, I, again, like literally sitting in the dog park, reading one of these like daily newsletters, which are totally overwhelming. Uh, I, I found somebody who's like doing a, an app for fashion designers and like, yeah, take in a sketch and get out all these like beautifully rendered copies. And it's like, it's probably like one guy or it's like, it could be the three of us. Um, I don't know if that's like a business or if it's really like a sustainable tool, but the fact that it's possible is incredible. And, and that to me is like, you couldn't, you couldn't just like, uh, kind of it piecewise advance your your way there from mm -hmm. existing tools like this is this is mm -hmm. just a, a a massively new thing and and that isn't even the start of it. like really what we'll see you guys might see the some of this like people are doing it with gans uh now they're doing it with diffusion models as they get faster but like actually like putting down brush strokes and having art come out the other side and it's yeah. still very science fair but it feels again like the kind of thing that is just a different animal it's not like Oh, it's a dog and it's like a different breed of dog. It's like, no, it's a bird, you know, like, okay, mm. cool. It's an animal, but it's like, mm. it's just very different in the, in the evolutionary tree. And, and they're both really cool to experiment with. What I love about uh, the, the things you mentioned clearly about yourself and Russell is, and, and I guess this goes back to the concept of competition because a lot of people fear competition, but you yeah. mentioned the moment Dolly came out, that's when it ignited sort of the passion in you guys that, oh yeah, there's this new thing new kind of block who can do crazy things yeah and now it gives you more passion to go back and and have a, a healthy competition in a, in a way to who can create the best set of tools that can allow for more creativity amongst people mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. i think beautiful the beautiful thing that competition allows now i want to take it a little step back and talk a little bit more about adobe firefly Clearly, mm. Adobe Firefly has been one of the most revolutionary tools. If anybody watching or listening right now hasn't used it yet, it's free to test around, I believe. And, and mm -hmm. please go ahead and give it a try. It's mind-boggling how crazy good some of the tools are. We were testing with some of them yesterday even. And, and it's just fascinating, right? You mentioned something about, I believe in, in a previous podcast, about a wishing well, where mm. right now a lot of the AIs, and, and they're getting better over time, but a lot of the AIs is something like a wishing well where you throw in a prompt and then you hope to get something good back. You never know what you're going to get back. Right. How far is Adobe from a point of creating something that can work for creatives in, in businesses? Because creatives in businesses, they need something that works, that something that's solid. And we're talking in terms of photo, in terms of video, in terms of audio, and eventually 3d because it's more complex to do 3d but you guys are definitely doing that you showed us something crazy can i just say what uh, like the tool that you showed us maybe sure. you can even talk about that a little bit yeah yeah okay gosh there's a lot to unpack okay yeah yeah uh, <laughs> sorry that was, no, that was just so hey, much came out listen I, don't apologize that's all i'm doing and like these like nine minute <laughs> answers if you even want to call them that um <laughs> but Gosh, where to start? Yeah, well, let me just touch on the 3D thing, because it also, it, it relates to an earlier question you asked about, like, simplification of software. Yeah. And it, it's, a, okay, I'll step back one level further. I have a, a running discussion with a friend of mine. He's a, a graphic design teacher, really talented guy. He's teaching my son's uh, design. And, and there is a lot of, like, sense of, of kind of mourning, actually. Like, mm -hmm just like sadness from people. And it's not just graphic arts. I, I found somebody who's like a productivity expert and they were talking about, you know, large language models. And they're like, yeah, it's great. I can do these things easily now. But like, I spent all this time refining my craft and learning how to work around the problems and then it just goes away. And it's, it's a super valid, natural feeling. Um, 
I mean, before our time, you know, I'm sure in the 80s when when people had spent 20 years, you know, cutting out letters physically from sheets, like you, if you wanted to put some type down, you had to like get more sheets to come in. And then like, well, I can't really say that because I, I ran out of the letter C. It's like, really? That seems like an, an insane phenomenon, right? And obviously computers yeah. solve that. But in the process, then people didn't have to sweat as much, you know, to do all that. If you can just put it in PageMaker. And of course, then people made like really weird kind of gross ransom note stuff. They're like, well, I paid for 30 fonts. I better use all 30. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, but like that was just part of the evolution that the world had to go through. Like just, is that a good idea? I don't know. Let's try it. It's like tail fins on cars. It's like, how big can we make them? Mm. Finally, people are like, okay, that's enough. And yeah, it, and so there, there was... Um, a class of craft that that grew up in response to the needs and then went away but people grew up new crafts and and now we're seeing this too where i'm, I'm getting to this because of 3d you know a lot of of 3d it's it is it's mostly unintentional i think but there's a lot of gatekeeping that goes on just mm -hmm. because it's a lot of stuff uh i was talking to uh um is gal julie design it's her handle uh and um, she was talking about picking up After Effects this week. And I think, I hope she's having a good time, but it's a lot. It is a lot because it's just, it's not only all the Photoshop stuff, but it all moves. And then you have to think about like memory management. You th in the, what is a pre-comp and composing those? And it's just, it, the, the grammar is more complex. With, with 3D, well, there's this, uh, this joking condition called Irish Alzheimer's, which is where you forget everything except the grudges. And so for me, like, <laughs> I don't look back and like, oh, yeah, we shipped that, we shipped that, we can fix those bugs. It was great. I'm like, what did I miss on? And, and back in, in um, 2007, we put 3D into Photoshop. And again, it was, we, we came in with like blazing guns and it was just very exciting. And I was like, ah, finally, we're going to take this stuff, which is so hard. And we're going to like regular graphic designers use it. I think we were just like really, really naive. Like it was, it was easy to maybe to go with the first 50% or even the first 80%, but it's the other percent that killed it. And it was like, for most people they couldn't, they just couldn't get around the corner to like make good looking 3d type or, or just like put a texture on something and have it because it's like, you have to understand materials and lighting and, yeah. and, and normals. And like, what the hell is, you mean, nor no, no, not that kind of normal, a different normal. And, yeah. you know, I, I, it's not to say that, um, Diffusion models will solve everything, but what I think is really interesting is is how they're starting to solve a lot of the problems. You know, we we can take things and on my Twitter feed, I've, I've put up some of these very short demos where it's like gray box art, right? Like I think it was like a Lego guy with no paint, and and just by like putting in these primitives into space, you can then give the the system some guidance, right? And like we were talking about. You know, do we think traditional UIs will go away like the lasso tool or the move tool? Well, no, yeah. because sometimes it's nice to just move the thing, right? You don't want to be like a yeah. little to the left, a little to no, a little, and actually a little bit more to the right, a little more to the right. Or you change one thing and three other things change. Sometimes you just want to like move the Coke, change the deal, whatever. And with 3D, um, I think for a lot of the tasks, like just maybe making a background or an environment, uh, using some simple primitives and describing what you want could be perfectly sufficient. You know, for the more like super, super demanding stuff. Let's say you're Nike and you have like this, you know, CAD render of a, a sneaker. It can't just be like kind of a sneaker. It has to exactly be that sneaker, full stop. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm imagining we'll have a world of kind of hybridization where, you know, if you just want to make um, something like a cool scene or a cool element in a scene, you know, for a guy like me, maybe using a simple uh, 3D primitive plus some diffusion could be great. You know, maybe if, if that's like in Photoshop or it's in Stager, that could be sufficient. For other tasks, maybe I still want to use, you know, traditional geometry, materials, renderer. I bet there'll be a lot of really cool ways to put those together. And so I don't, that's again, it's it's the yes and idea. It, it's not to say, uh, well, God, now the world's even worse because you had all the complexity before plus the new complexity. Hopefully that won't mm -hmm. be true. But, but hopefully what'll happen is for a lot of the things that used to take a lot of this sort of like, climbing of the stack. We used to say, you must be at least 12 pixels high to write Photoshop. You know, you had to just mm -hmm. learn all of these basic things. Um, you know, some of that, some of that either, either can go away or it can be deferred, right? It can, it can come in only when you need and want that level of precision. And, and for the rest of it, if you just want to do something simple quickly, it's kind of like photo software where a lot of the edits that used to be 
really demanding in Photoshop. You can, it can actually be smart and be like, oh, I, I know that person, you know, what, what a normal skin tone is. And therefore, oh, they're in a shadow. I can fix that for you. Right. You didn't have to learn a lasso tool and, you know, yeah. all, all that stuff. But again, it also didn't mean you shouldn't or that those things wouldn't help you. It's just for the first end percent where you, you that would have been a blocker that just would have cut the total number of people. Now that doesn't have to be true. And and I really, you know, I, I joke with the 3D team. It's like, um, I don't know if it's a good or bad motivation, but it's like, I, I have my white whale. Like I want to, I want to get back and I want to fix all the stuff that like we started, we built a bridge like halfway over this ravine and it's been sitting there looking ridiculous, you know, since like the Bush administration. And it's like, well, can we just finish the damn job now? Like maybe the tools <laughs> will open those doors that, that we can make it easy in a way that we just couldn't. Mm -hmm. It's uh, definitely fascinating. Uh, I want to just consider the fact that what you guys have as a tool set for 3D artists, specifically Substance Painters, the, the software that we use, which mm -hmm. has allowed us to create such amazing textures for, for all the 3D work that we do. And we know so many 3D artists who their go-to software is Substance Painter. And we were just thinking, how great would it be? Because there's already a, a, a stupendous amount of textures that you can look for in the Adobe website mm. uh, that you can just download once you're subscribed, which is already more than enough. But mm. what if you could type in a prompt and create the texture that you exactly needed? Yeah. Right? Like all yeah. of these questions come to mind and we are just so excited for the future. I, mean, I saw Faros crying the other night talking about this while he was texturing a character. And he was like, the same text prompt that I would use in the generative field, if I could use it here, yeah. you could go to sleep earlier tonight, not, not stay awake like, until 3 a.m. I just need a scar, right? right? I'm, I, I, was doing, I was doing up a metahuman right. for, for our mm. Unreal Engine project. And I was mm. like, what if I could just add a scar on his face? I don't want to go mm. and Google mm. the image or even you know, generate it and then come up, please. I just want to generate that texture. Yeah, and just imagining yeah. all of these things being added to every piece of Adobe, it's gonna, it's a bright future. It's a, it's a future I'm excited yeah. about. Good, good. Me too. I think so. So a couple of thoughts. Um, th this will be a digression, but hopefully entertaining. So, so way back in the day when Adobe bought Macromedia, uh, mm. you know, so so like Adobe, you know, was like these forty something, you know, Xerox scientists. You know, that's like its start. You know, and Macromedia was much more like kind of gunslinger. They were in San Francisco and it was like, you know, they made Flash and it was much more like, woohoo. And and yeah. Adobe, you know, <laughs> like we, we bought them and, and like Macrobeauty people were like, they visited the Adobe um, uh, San Jose office and they're like, I don't know, it looks like a bank. Like these guys are like, <laughs> these guys are no fun. But Adobe, of course, like not so secret, we were like, oh yeah, please make us fun. Like, please make us cool. <laughs> and um, we always do this, by the way. And um, then some user researchers asked people like, Okay, if if the if various apps were people at a party, who would they be? Like, can you describe that person? And Photoshop was like this um, gray bearded professor, right? Like you could tell this guy's done a ton, is very impressive, and and seems friendly. You go talk to him, but like you're a little bit afraid. Um, Illustrator was like this beautiful woman over in the corner, and it was just like, okay, I got probably no shot here, but like, wow, I I get it. That's <laughs> that's great. Um, and Flash was like the young dude who was wearing like those, you know, sunglasses with like the, the louvers on them. And he's like, yeah. women are like throwing drinks in his face, but he's also going home with a bunch of numbers. Right. Yeah. So, so <laughs> and, and so I'm trying to think like, where would I put substance in there? And it's somewhere <laughs> um, in, in the realm of, I, I think like professor slash beautiful woman, like yeah. it's like, yeah. Oh yeah, that's, 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 that's cool. I, I definitely should make time. Personally, I haven't, but I'm like, oh yeah, like the stuff we we were starting to do in Photoshop with like you know uh, projection painting and things. Mm -hmm. It's like they actually really leaned into it and they really got it right. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, with with the the question you're asking about um, generative texturing. So first of all, I, I have to just put a lot of caveats, right? Because I it's not a world I know very well. I, I'm I'm intrigued mm -hmm. by it. I'd love to to learn more. Um, I mean. I always kind of wonder, like you say, there are so many um, generated materials today. And the same goes for for shapes. Um, you know, every so often, even this morning, I found a couple um, research papers where people are using 3D to, to, to shape, or they'll take a 2D shape and they'll make a 3D shape. And it is incredibly, incredibly cool. I, my sort of um, devil's advocate wonders, I'm like, well, why wouldn't you just use one of the shapes that exist? 
right? Like if you went on Sketchfab or TurboSquid or, you know, something like, do we need a new, like, do I need to be able to like make an attack helicopter just by describing an attack helicopter? Or would I be better off if it's like, oh yeah, somebody went and they spent three months of their life making this thing and I can buy it for, you know, 20 bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever. Um, and, and so again, this is a naive question. I don't think there's a right answer, at least in my mind, but like with the textures, kind of what is the advantage of making something yourself versus using something that exists? Um, you know, we talk about like the long tail and, and I think that's where with, uh, like the, the shape generation, it's like, okay, what are the things that I, that don't, that don't already exist in the corpus of things people have made? Um, mm -hmm. could I make those? And then would I be better served by describing it and generating geometry? Or now there's all these like cool photogrammetry techniques. You know, I could like walk around it. I could make a nerf. I could make, you know, some volumetric representation. I don't know. I, I, again, I think it's, it's the not knowing that makes a lot of this fun. You know, it's sort of like watching athletes, like, will that guy make it? I don't know. I wouldn't try that, but like, let's watch and find out. And uh, so, so it is kind of back to that high wire act of, um, yeah, can, can we find a way where, where these, these technologies can, can be useful? By the way, I'll just put my cards on the table with, with textures. I mean, one of the things that, that people tell us they want with Illustrator, which is a world I, I know somewhat better, is, um, yeah, of course there's textures, but a lot of it is, it's it's kind of, it's not as vibrant an ecosystem, right? I mean, people, they're like, oh, like here's some some PostScript thing from 1992, like, and it's still sitting around in the, in the sample files. Um, if you could do things more descriptively and more expressively, but do it in context, that would be a huge boost. And again, I mean, people are excited if we make a whole scene, right, and do it in vector, do it in raster. But it's like, yeah, day to day, man, what I actually need is just like fill a hole. So great, generative fill, awesome. And it's like, yeah, then I'm also using some texture. So like, help me make a texture, right? I don't need you to make the whole world for me. That's my job. Like to your point, you was like, oh, I could have gone to bed earlier. You're not going to go to bed earlier. If you're like, me. you know, come on, you're going to stay up later, but you'll do something more interesting in the time you stayed up, you know? So at least yeah. you didn't, you didn't waste your time and, and not to be um, indelicate, but there's a great essay called shit work. And it's basically says like, don't, don't give your user shit work. Right. It's like this was written in the time of like Google Plus making everybody like add friends to circles. And you had to sit there and like, yeah. all right, Farhad, well, we, we met. And OK, now are we friends or are we coworkers? I mean, <laughs> well, we're kind of both. You know what I mean? And then and people are like, ah, screw this. I'm not going to do it. And um, yeah. it's like, thankfully, you know, algorithms got good enough that that more or less like it could it could just sort that out for you. And similarly, if we can just kind of get that kind of um, dumb stuff out of your way. I, again, like, yeah, I, if you can go to bed earlier, great, please get sleep. That matters. But like, mm -hmm. I also just know the nature of ambitious, creative people. They're just going to be like, okay, what the, with that out of the way? Oh my God. Now I could learn after effects. Or I could try this other yeah. bananas thing yeah. that like was just been, mm -hmm. would have been prohibitive otherwise. Mm -hmm. That's exactly like the, the message that you are trying to send with AI is that it speed up your process. You can focus on the things that you love yeah. rather than doing things that are repetitive or taking a lot of your time. Right. But, I want to ask a question that you started the conversation with, that you talked to a lot of your friends and they are worried, rightfully so. Yeah. But what I saw the other day, there was a live stream from Adobe, actually, and the, there was Lisa Carney on it talking about how she designed movie poster using Adobe uh, product suit. Yeah. And it was so interesting for me. She was an advocate for AI. She was super excited to use yeah. it. And the way she used it, it was crazy to me. If you, if I didn't watch that live stream, I would put her in the category of people who should be worried and who mm. are worried mm. about AI. But look at her. She's, she's working on a lot of the posters for like the films and stuff that we've seen. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. how can someone, for the people who are watching now, how can someone transition themselves from being a person who is worried and now who is a person who is using AI to their advantage to save time, to create better products, to improve the quality? That, yeah, I don't know how big a, a number you want to put on it. That's the $64,000 question, $64 billion question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't presume to have total answers. I, I think when I see somebody like Lisa, who I, I've only recently met, um, but she's been, you know, uh, she's been doing this for 30 years, I think, you know, and, and it's like super, super inspiring, much like Russell, um, just to see somebody who's like innately curious, right? Like, I think that's, that's one of the, the interesting things. You guys mentioned burnout earlier, and I will tell you, like, as excited as I am now, I kind of, I kind of swing higher and lower, right? I, I look at a lot of 
a lot of my peers, a lot of the people who've like way exceeded me organizationally. Like uh, they could make a movie about me called the 47 year old IC, you know, inter- individual contributor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have a new manager and we, ha- she and I should have a talk and be like, what do I actually want to do? And I'm like, th- I just mm-hmm. kind of want to do this, honestly. Like, I just want to do this better. Like help me be better at this, but like, I don't need to be a director or VP or whatever. Right. I, I just, I want to do this. The thing I observe though, is like what, what tends to work in a career is a lot of, um, well, the Germans have this term Sitzfleisch, which it, it sounds like sit flesh because it kind of is a <laughs> cognate. And it's basically just means patience. Like it just means the power of like an iron ass, right? Like the ability, like you guys know, like sometimes a lot of the work, it isn't fancy, but you just got to pound it out. Right. And you just got to grind it. I mean, when I got out of college, I didn't have a design degree. I somehow like BS my way into an agency and like, I was willing to work for like no money basically. Um, but they're like, yeah, we need like 200 animated GIFs made today because like we, we don't have a fancy thing. We just made them made. So fine. So anyway, the Sitzfleisch thing, a lot of, a lot of career advancement seems to come from just like be, be reliable, be predictable, kind of like keep going. And man, if I had more of that, I'd be better off. My, my wife's a, a program manager and she's so good. Like I, I'd probably be, you know, outside living in the van as opposed to just driving <laughs> our van. You know, because, but like she, she's like, oh, did we you actually had to pay the title? I'm like, oh yeah, right. Cool. Um, but, but the thing with me is it, this is ultimately back to like Lisa and Russell and curiosity and passion. It's like, those are also, uh, rare currencies I find. And I, I think a lot of the art of, of me and my own career is just trying to, to find like product market fit, right? It's like, I'm not going to be that most reliable guy. Like in terms of just like, did you do the, 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 the like just, you know, like I, I, again, I wish I was better. I, I'm not saying I won't try to be, but like you can't fake curiosity. And, and when I see somebody who's been in the game for 30 years, right, obviously they've seen a lot of stuff come and go. I mean, they probably weathered the storm the first time, you know, going from God knows what it was, if, if anything, you know, it was like, maybe it was like rub down letters or a Quantel paint box, you know, and it's like, Hey, guess what? I'm sorry to inform you. Your skills are now the value is going to zero because we're just not going to do that yeah. anymore. And it's like, shit, that sucks. Okay. <sighs> Have a drink, you know, wipe it off. And like, what are we going to do now? Um, I mean, I can't, the, the part is I don't want to be too, too glib because it's like, if, if, um, if, if somebody, you know, using Adobe express or PowerPoint or Canva or whatever tool can make something, it's not going to be as good as what they would have gotten. And they know it. Right. But they also can do it in four minutes by typing some text prompts. And like they got something approximating a solution. It's like kids cheating on homework. Eh, it's not as good as my essay, but it's like it's good enough. And guess what? I'm on, you know, and I forgot to do the thing and it's this or, or yeah. fail. Right. I'm going to do it. I, I don't I don't know that there's a world where the exact same number of what we currently consider creative jobs stays the same. I hope what happens is. um even that they're, they're not the same jobs and people don't pay for the same things, there is now such a, a possibility of content uh, that there's there's enough seats at the table. Um, I started reading an essay this morning. I wish I'd, I'd finished it, but it was already super interesting. This guy, Benedict Evans, um, he was writing about automation and just like looking at the last like 200 years of like, you know, the industrial revolution and, and steam. And there are these interesting things that, which are paradoxes, right? You would think that like, oh, well, Oh, shoot, we're going to run out of coal. And people are like, well, don't worry. We'll make steam engines more efficient and therefore we'll have enough coal. And they're like, well, actually, that's not going to be what happens when you make them more more efficient, use more coal because Mm -hmm. now more things became possible. So the demand actually in aggregate goes up, even though the individual ones get more efficient. Um, And he was also talking this notion of a, a lump of labor, which is sort of a classic idea, which is like, well, there's there's this amount of labor and there's this amount of stuff to do. And well, we made the stuff to do more efficient. So now you have this leftover labor and those people are screwed. And it's like, sometimes that happens, but there's been this like literally now hundreds of years of humans reinventing themselves. Because like I say, you're probably not going to go to bed earlier. You're just going to hustle and do something better because that's your chance to set yourself apart. And I think, again, if we can kind of get the crap out of people's way um, and that, that will let people who are, are curious and flexible you know, keep, keep being so, but man, I, I'm honest. Like I, like I say, before Dali, even I was like, 
maybe we've chewed this gum long enough. Maybe there's just no <laughs> flavor here. And, and, and I, yeah, I thought AI first creativity was going to be a thing and I just couldn't make it happen, which I couldn't. I'd been at Adobe a year by that time. And I'm like, I came back to shoot my shot and crap, I didn't get it done at Google either because nobody cared, right? No, 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 all they were going to do was crop their photo if we were lucky, you know? But then this stuff hit and they were like, ah, I'm glad the sits flesh kicked in and I was willing and able to sit here long enough to, till this next, you know, sort of log came along for me to jump onto. No, that's a beautiful way to put it. I think it was a Lex Friedman podcast that we were watching very recently. Similar, similar sort of conversations where there's not a set number of labor and work to do. The demand, the, there's always new demand that is created when new sort of um, intelligence or new efficiencies pop up. And this time it's even greater than before. So we might see a shift and it might seem negative for a lot of people now, but I'm sure eventually, like you mentioned, there's going to be newer demands for newer things. And we're going to be seeing right. a lot more of that. And, and you guys are clearly trying to highlight that by, by creating the tools that allows people to put the crap aside and focus on the things that actually matter and focus on the things that they can improve on. Yeah. Um, speaking of focusing on things that they can improve on, we touch a little bit on the 3d side of things and, and, uh, and for, for photo generative fill, what about video and, and audio? Just want to talk on that. Do you, do you have any updates or any news that you can share with us about what's happening? Cause we did see the Adobe Firefly for video and that was just incredible. Is yeah. do you know when that's coming out? Is it available? <laughs> we just want to have some information on that if that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Really good questions. Um, so, what, you, what you're referring to, in case folks haven't seen it, it was like probably a 60 or 90 second little kind of vision and, and teaser we put out at NAB. Mm -hmm. And I, I can find it. I know it's in my my uh, my Twitter feed somewhere. Um, it's just it was kind of this rapid fire. It was like, you know, how could we change storyboarding? How could we change, uh, you know, B-roll generation? How could we, you know, do track mats better? And it's just kind of go, go, go. If you unpack it, of course, every one of those is like totally different technology and they're all like totally yeah. different stages. Um, so I think a bunch of them, you know, can come around relatively soon. Um, I don't want to, you know, speak out of turn for, for those teams. I will say I talk a lot to them. Um, you know, the thing that drew me to Adobe 23 years ago was After Effects, basically. And, you know, I was a Flash animator and I was like, I, thankfully, again, I hope I don't think you guys go far enough back to remember the pain. But it was like. Somebody literally took like um, a notes app for like an Apple Newton in like 1994 and, and like through this bizarre evolutionary process, you know, it became like, well, it's like a little bit of animation. It became this and it became like a motion graphics tool, but it was a nightmare. It was absolutely like I loved what I could do and I hated how it made me do it. And so Adobe was like, hey, what if we took like the After Effects approach, brought that to the web and then we made uh, and this was the part where. Where, where the bridge was out and we didn't know it. But like, what if we did web standards? We'll do SVG, we'll do CSS, we'll do JavaScript. And it was the right answer. It just was 10 years too soon. And so it was like, yeah. oh, crap. Well, actually, they can't do that. The only practical, okay, well, so we're going to do, we're going to do Flash. And then it was like, well, we can't win on somebody else's uh, field, right? But anyway, um, so, so I love that world. And so I talked to those folks a lot. And um, yeah, I think they're thinking about kind of the range of possibilities. I mean, in, in the limit, there is, of course, like type words generate. You could generate a script. You could generate visuals. You could make it temporally coherent. You know, there's folks like Runway who are doing awesome work now. You know, and, and it seems like kind of, you know, month by month, maybe week by week, they're like, oh, we could do two seconds. We could do three seconds. How about seven seconds? And it seems trivial, but it's like, yeah, but if it's compounding in that way, it gets somewhere pretty interesting pretty quick. Um I mean, video and it, the, the nature of the beast is a lot around, um, I mean, the compute, right? As, as you well know, right? with 3D and with video. I never had anybody, by the way, who worked in those tools um, tell me on a Photoshop customer visit, like, man, I wish Photoshop was easier. They're like, that's never the issue, right? <laughs> they, they would be like, dude, how come your 32-bit story sucks so much? You know, and you don't know, and you uh, this Targa file, and you had the alpha channel in the wrong place. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay, okay. But like the nerdiest <laughs> stuff. But it was never like, this is complicated. Um, yeah. so, so people get that it, there's a lot of compute. There's a lot of mental horsepower. Um, so I think it may take some time for, for things like real, you know, generation of video to, to be like production quality. I think there's tons of like surgical applications that could be interesting. You know, even um, th there's a sort of interesting uh, back and forth happening between my my current Adobe teammates and my former Google teammates. So last August, uh, I believe, 
um, some of the Google folks came out with uh, Style Booth. Was it Dream? St- no, sorry, Dream Booth. We'll, we'll get there. Right? I, the names get mixed up, but Dream Booth, right? So you guys have seen this, where it's basically mm-hmm. custom model training. You know, and you can take like, hey, take five selfies or five pictures of your dog, and like we'll make a concept, and then we'll like be able to do things with that. And then uh, a couple months ago, my Adobe teammates came out with this thing, Instant Booth. And they're like, hey, remember Style Booth? What if that was like 100 times faster? Like, that sounds good. Because then instead of like, I upload this stuff and I wait 15 minutes, it's like, maybe I can just do it in context. And then, you know, like two, three weeks ago, uh, the Google folks are like, hey, we got this thing called um, Style Drop. Like, hey, what if instead of requiring five images, you had one image? And, And then you could just upload that. So now being, again, a crazy person, I'm going around this old town we're in and finding like antique illustrations of like take a picture of that take a picture of that take a picture of that like what and, and i'm like dming these guys I'm like hey when can we have a build where i can like upload this and see if it's really true does it really work that well because that would just be mind-blowing right yeah. um anyway so I, I think there will be these these more focused applications like and the reason i'm going off about the um the dream booth stuff is you know if you want to tell a narrative with uh characters right you want to do storyboarding one of the things we get asked a lot about is well this is cool. Like I can say, you know, a young woman in her thirties with blonde hair, et cetera, et cetera. But then like every time you generate, you get a different young woman and blonde in her thirties with, with blonde hair. You, you need to get like Sarah or right? you need to get Dave or whoever. And putting um, more of like the, the, the custom training stuff at people's disposal could, could be like a very tractable way of say, Hey, it's not like you're not going to storyboard. You have to rethink everything you did. You can just do it better. You can do it faster. You can like convey your ideas with more precision. Um, you know, I mentioned our friend Christian and he hasn't fully decloaked on like what his startup concept.art is, is, uh, is his domain. Um, what he's going to do, but given his, his rich history with, with Adobe, he actually then went to uh, stability for a, a brief period before being like, no, I really do want to do a startup. And like knowing what it takes to sell a script in Hollywood, um, mm-hmm. I can, I can kind of speculate that, you know, he'll be working on tools along those lines. You could also imagine, you know, very natural touch points with Adobe apps where, you know, helping you uh, kind of construct a script or a story and then turn that into you know, what do you, what are the ingredients you need? Do you need like a premiere project? Do you need an after effects mock-up? Do, do you want to generate textures? How about logos? Like how, how far into the process do we want to get a running start based on the seeds of the ideas and the characters that you had? And so again, lots, probably more open questions than there are answers there, but I can imagine rather than getting like a, Hey, today we, we, you know, we flipped the two switches and we turned the two keys and now there's a firefly for mm-hmm. video. What you'll end up getting is like, this sort of progressive rollout of like focused applications that will all ultimately complement each other. And it'll feel like forever. It'll, you know, let's say it's two years or something. And then we'll look back and be like, Oh, that was quick. But like, while you're doing yeah. it, like, Oh my God, like, I, I can't believe we haven't done that yet. It's like, people are going to die. It's like, they're not going to die, but, like, but good for you for, for wanting to move quick. One, one thing you mentioned, and I agree with you, I think it's a surgical applications of what Adobe Firefly for video will do that will inherently benefit a lot of people. I'm more so excited about those, the smaller tools that will come out rather than, oh, generate this video for me. Because yeah. more often than not, we have the videos ready, we have the audio, we just want to make you know small changes. Like, for example, for generative fill for photo, but imagining stuff like that for audio and like small sound effects and stuff like that. And exactly. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people will be interested in, 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 in that suit. Well, but just and, just before I like they go on, I, there was I heard a siren in the background, right? And that's yeah. the kind of thing where it's like sometimes you maybe want to add a siren, sometimes you just want to remove it, you know. And there have been cool mm-hmm. tools like at Adobe Audition, like basically a healing brush. And you know, if you know what to look for, it's like the, watching the Matrix, like blonde, brunette, redhead. You're like, oh, there's the siren, yeah. and I can like draw over the siren and get rid of it. Mm-hmm. But but just kind of like you're saying, these these very surgical applications, I think in that that concept video. Um, they're talking about B-roll or they're talking about sound effects mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, let me just, maybe I don't want to search a, a stock library of audio and like try to get this one versus that one. I'm like, oh, I just want this kind of sound like, and just make that on the fly. And then at least I know, you know, people aren't going to be like, Hey man, I, wait a minute. I know you bought that stock asset. Cause I've seen that before. <laughs> you know, I used that three years ago in a project. It's like, no, nope, it, you couldn't have, it did not exist before. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but it is like you say, a very kind of pointed um, directed application as opposed to like trying to boil the whole ocean in one go. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's exactly what you mentioned. That's exactly what people will be using the most. And one reason I believe Adobe is doing a great job at the moment is because Adobe is focused on creating all these smaller applications that you guys are clearly testing out. And that's why you're allowing people to test them out for free and just play around with them and understand how they work. And you guys get to get totally. live feedback from people. One totally. one interesting uh, point here, and I think we discussed this with Farad, is you have kids and clearly you are in love with them because most we, we did stalk you a little bit before the podcast. I hope you're okay with that. Right, good. But clearly uh, you're not that difficult. You are yeah, over to I know. YouTube. <laughs> Like it's there. You have it's there. millions of videos and photos of your kids, and and clearly you enjoy spending time with them. Clearly you want the best for them. Yeah. You you being in the field of design and in in, in the field of creativity and you know manning the helm in this field. What is your advice to them and potentially other? you know, kids who could be watching this and, you know, they're eventually going to get a career. They're looking to get into the creative field. What is your advice to them? What should they work on? What should they learn in order to be able to navigate and have success? Oh, good, good question. So, so one son, the older one, he's 15, he's interested in um, fashion design, you know, and and a month from now, it could be something different. That's part of the fun of being that age, right? You get to keep discovering things and getting inspired. Um, but that's really interesting to him now. And so he's, um, he, and he's also interested in music. And so he's focusing on just some like basic stuff, like learning the piano and like, you know, playing scales. And it's like, nobody loves like playing scales, but like you, mm-hmm. you, again, you have to be 12 pixels high to write Photoshop, like learn some basics, yeah. you know, with, with the fashion stuff, um, you know, we just try to be supportive and like, man, there's so many ways you could go. Like, I don't want to force you to like. I don't know, grind on things. I mean, sometimes that has value, but like mm-hmm. if you're not interested in typography or sculpture or whatever, like there's, there's plenty, like come in here. We found a great lady who, um, who runs a, just an, like an open studio and she's teaching him like some, um, you know, textile, uh, stuff and, and just like basic sewing. And, and he's, um, it's funny. His younger brother is much more theatrical you'll see him all over the social stuff whereas the the older one is it's more like those fish that live in a cave you know and it's like if the sun hits them they like catch on fire so they're like like, (laughs) if he's it's almost like sasquatch like if there's very occasionally like you'll find a a picture of him but but um but he prefers to work like behind the scenes in the theater department and just like learn like how do you how does all this stuff work in the costuming you know the younger one is much happier being on stage and and like being being a very bombastic um, with the younger one, he and I did a photo workshop out in Ely, Nevada in, uh, in February. And it was, it was amazing. It's like, it's like, I'm, I'm pretty cheap by nature. Like I don't want to spend money, but I'm like, man, they, they always say invest in experiences and not in things like have stories to mm-hmm. tell instead of stuff to show. And yep. it's a little cliche, but it's pretty true. And so what was amazing is, you know, part of it is like, okay, you don't have to try very hard. Like you're going to be next to a steam engine at dawn in the snow. Like, unless you have the lens cap on, you're probably going to get a pretty cool photo because it's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but part of the, the part that was neat is, um, you know, we're in this machine shed. He's already interested because he loves the subject, which is trains. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there with these like accomplished pro photographers. And they're like, well, let me show you like, uh, let's how to, let's do a portrait photography on one of the engineers who's like, you know, he's wearing the clothes, he's greasy, he's a like cool looking guy. Mm. And it's like, it, it's a, um, they provide the, the equipment. So it's like, all right, well, here's like the little hot shoe adapter. And like, we'll put this light over here and like, all right, take this photo. That's what's, uh, you know, again, um, I feel like old man Mac, you know, telling in my day, you had to, you had to wait for your photo <laughs> to come back, you know? And I, like, I didn't know, it's like, is a 15th of a second good? Or is it a 30th of a second? Like, I don't know, I'll try a bunch. And then like, I don't really remember what I did. I mean, now he's sitting there, there's a, you know, train engineer takes a picture and it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. But like, what if we tried like a little bit more open aperture? And like, what if I moved this light over here? And then like three dimensionally, like now you can understand the guy's face. It wasn't just like Picasso half cut off and, and just that real time feedback is cool. So, but, but I also tell them, you know, um, uh, the, the basics are great to learn. You know, I mentioned my friend, Kevin, who's the, uh, the, the uh, design instructor. And, um, you know, Kevin was in the Olympics a couple of times, totally previous life, like doing track and field stuff. And so he, um, 
he was posting a picture of himself from a few years back where he was like throwing a hammer, right? Like going around in a circle. And I was like, oh God, my younger son can be a little bit impatient. And I'm like, I hope, I hope this isn't him throwing a mouse in your class next semester when he discovers like <laughs> that illustrator has two arrow tools and they're different. And like, why is that? And it's like, I don't know. Somebody in 1987 made a decision and that's just the world we have. Um, so, so I know like a, the, the kids will get to learn those basics. B, they'll have to go through the frustration, but C, like sometimes that's, that's the best part in that. Um, it, it's only when you try to use something in practice, right. Then you're like, Oh my God, this sucks. Like, that's why I came to Adobe. I'm like, do you guys not use these tools? Like, Siri, like, I mean, I love you, but like, and I love the tools, but like, have you not been trying to like put Photoshop files into flash? And they're like, yeah, not really. I'm like, bro, it is a 20 layer file. It took me 168 steps to get that. Not animated, not at all. Literally just looking like this to looking like this in the other program. Like, yeah. it, and it's like the, part of the, the value I would provide is trying to be a good storyteller and get get the engineers to understand like like let's literally go to this lady's house like photoshop is taking five minutes to launch on a computer and like well mm-hmm. her computer's screwy and it's like maybe but like i bet she's not the only one and uh yeah. if we can like like make that one person happy i bet there'll be ten thousand other people we never get to meet them but you'll always, you know yeah. and helen and helen in wisconsin is like super appreciative right and and so yeah. it's like People, people don't, um, you know, these are a million cliches, right? But it's like even soldiers in war, it's like, well, you're fighting for the cause, sure. But really, you're fighting for the guy next to you and vice versa, mm-hmm. right? And, and if mm-hmm. you can make things like personal and meaningful, then then those things tend to get addressed. And and so ultimately with the, with the kids and the advice, it's like, you know, learn the basics, stay curious. Guess what? It, it None of it's going to stick around. My job too, our jobs, right? I mean, a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff that used to be hard and you, you sweat really hard. They don't, other people don't have to, and it kind of sucks. It's like going to the gym and it's like, I, I struggle and I try to lift these weights. And then it's like, and then we come in and everybody gets an Ironman mech suit. And it's like, <laughs> Hey, guess what? You can all lift 20,000 pounds. And it's like, Oh, but by all means still, you should totally still keep coming to the gym because if you can add 50 pounds and they're like, really though, it's like, it kind of cheapened the coin. And, and so there is that real sense of loss and mourning. Um, but I also think then, then the dawn, dawn comes again. And then there's like, well, mm. geez, dude, I, I had no idea that I could like take one letter form from like an 1890 topographical map in a antique store and like instantly teach a robot what that is and then have it make me like, I don't know, a penguin in the style of that letter form. Like, what does that even mean? That doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. And like, I don't know. Let's yeah. find out. That's cool. Like, and, and you could do like yeah. 50 other things. And it's just like, so, so it, it, it's the learning to learn. It's like, it, it's, it's even if fine, except that maybe you have higher highs and lower lows, but if you could just get through the lows, the, the highs tend to come back, you know, and there's, there's something new for you to um, contribute to. There's one thing that just came out in the middle of all of this. And I was thinking, I don't know if this is something Adobe has considered, but I, I don't know. I just thought it would be a great idea. I want to I want to get your opinion on it. But an AI teacher, per se, because mm-hmm. imagine t- using all these applications. They're, they're, they can be complex for someone who's just beginning and someone totally. who might have not been tech savvy their entire life. Now they want to get into Photoshop. Oh, my God. Like you asked, what if, how do I do this? Like- or maybe the AI could be watching you. And then as you're doing something wrong, it's like, hey, why don't you go ahead and try it this way? Why don't you go ahead and try it this way? So it's literally like someone holding your your hands as you're performing the task and because yeah. you mentioned all this while your job and and the engineer's job has been how can we simplify this how can we make it easier for people to get to from point a to point b yeah. and and use less amount of steps and also make sure they're doing it the right way so right. what if there was an ai tool that can also help you they're smart enough to know what you want to do and also help you get there that would be I think that will make it much easier for a lot of people to get into Photoshop and Illustrator and After Effects because totally. it's not like this giant complex thing. And I don't need to go and watch 30,000 tutorials on YouTube. Right. Maybe I just need to watch two. And right. after that, the AI will help me. Has, no, I, has Adobe considered that thought? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's funny because um, back in the day when Microsoft came out with Clippy, you know, the little talking, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> Any to use that. But so, too so, soon. Maybe it was too soon. <laughs> it, I think it was too soon. I think you're right. I mean, that's, that's, Mark Andreessen says, you know, being early is the same as being wrong. 
And again, it's yeah. like, yeah, we were we were right. I mean, the world did want like a good motion graphics tool for web standards. There just weren't any web standards. So it's like mm -hmm. there's stuff probably from 2033 that we can't even imagine. And it's like if we made a tool for that now. Good luck. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think the notion of an assistant has has always been with us. Back when Clippy was around, I used to joke about um, making Brushy the talking airbrush for Photoshop. And he'd be like a little, like a friendly little cowboy airbrush. And he'd be like, hey, you're trying to retouch a photo, you know? Uh, and, and it was like, it would be just even worse, super annoying. Um, but I think it is actually kind of possible. In fact, you know, when you guys were, were giving me this like very kind intro, I was like, oh God, you know, there's, there's these actual people in those roles. Um, so there's a guy named Alexandru Costin, who's a VP at Adobe. And... Um, he he's really the guy you know organizing and driving our our division um but i mentioned him because part of my journey back to adobe from google was in 2020 and it was because um the, the team alexandru had been leading worked on two things one was uh neural filters in photoshop so like mm -hmm. kind of like the first desktop cloud connection where you could do like this hybrid yeah. uh calculation and, and deliver models and they learned a lot in that process um, the other was this discover panel in Photoshop mm -hmm. where it's more sort of task oriented and again, didn't have LLMs and all this hotness now, but um, it, it was a weird time for me because my, I was working on like 3d cloud rendering and streaming at Google. It was amazing. It's like, no one cares. Like, <laughs> well, let me just bottom mm -hmm. line this. Like no one, no mm -hmm. one needs a three to three gigabyte Volvo streaming into their, uh, their, their lap while they're lying in bed, you know, mm -hmm. but, but good try anyway. So I was a little bored and they were, that was going to go away. So I reached out to Alexandru and I was like, hey, look at these things you got into Photoshop. Um, at the time, my, my old Adobe blog was still running. And I sent him a link to this PDF where I had asked for feedback in like 2009. And I'm like, but you actually did it. And I don't mean that like, well, we were first. It's like, do it again. It was before its time. It, it just, the stars didn't align. But but like I say, the needs were there. It's like, you go back to Aristotle, like what makes a good story, right? I mean, a story yeah. is a story. Like we're still mammals like we used to be. Um, and so uh, I, I think by by virtue of laying down these foundations, mm -hmm. a lot of possibilities exist. I think the folks who worked on that would say, yeah, it was a step forward. It was not the be all end all, right? But mm -hmm. maybe, you know, it, it's the, um, was it uh, Archimedes, you know, give me a place to stand and I'll move the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like if we can not try to do everything ourselves, but give people a place to stand, um, then, you know, smart enterprising could be you guys. Who knows? Like, you just like, oh, what if I use Bard or ChatGPT? And then I like, oh, can I train on this corpus? You know, and then like, mm -hmm. what if what if it was like, and I'm, again, this is like literally me guessing and making stuff up. But like, if you looked at all the Adobe HelpX tutorial content, right? I mean, it's 30 mm -hmm. years of people teaching each other how to do stuff. Yeah. There have to be some best practices we could learn, you would think, exactly. right? Yeah. And so uh, I think just making it contextual, like, again, the same same thing mm -hmm. with Chandra to Phil. It's not like you couldn't go to Dali and, and do stuff and then have brought it over, you know, before. I mean, same, same. I, I keep waiting for Midjourney to frankly explode when they, they stop dragging around this like piano size weight behind them, which is a, a freaking command line interface from 1982, yeah. you know, that, that yeah, runs through yeah. like a gaming chat. Like it, it yeah. they get a lot of, right. They, they get a lot of um, social uplift from it. And so it was probably a really brilliant call in retrospect, but to this day, I'm like, at some point I'm going to wake up in the midjourney.com just going to have a GUI. Right. I mean, obviously like, yeah. how could you not do that? Like, and they're sneaking uh, bits of it. They haven't done it until they're now, doing, they're like... working on it. Yeah. Yeah. I met some guys at a party a couple months ago. They're working on it. Um, but yeah, no, I, it, it does seem like, uh, they could do it. They must have, they must have good reasons. I hope it'll be, I hope and fear that it'll be amazing. I'll be honest with you. Right. <laughs> Cause like, if somebody just wants to make creative tools, I'm like, Oh God, that's probably going to be really cool. And it's like, but yeah. that's okay. Because honestly, and, and sorry, no, it's another digression, but like the thing that, that made Adobe Lightroom a success despite Adobe was Apple coming out with Aperture. And Aperture is like long since canceled. I mean, a lot of the tech made its way in Apple Photos, so it didn't die. I mean, it's it's good stuff. Mm. But like they decided, yeah, we're going to go after Adobe. Like we're not going to go after Photoshop, but we're going to take what we know with iPhoto and we're going to bring it out as like its own new thing. And man, for three years, I'd watched my my new then new you know Photoshop teammates who'd gone over to this Lightroom project. They were trying all this stuff. They were struggling. I was PM in Camera Raw, which became the heart of of Lightroom. Um, 
but it was it wasn't even like that they didn't know it was like photographers didn't know they just like people couldn't see it and and apple like we were saying earlier if you have that clarity of vision and you can tell the story that is worth gold and and what mm-hmm. they did is they wrapped the entire Javits Center in New York City, like this convention center, in banners that were, must have been 40 feet high. And they said, Aperture, everything you need after the shoot. It's $500. It's not Photoshop. There's no layers. You're welcome. Uh, and you need a super sick Mac to run it. And, and the world was like, oh, my God. OK, that's cool. And then Adobe was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, you know what? We have one of those. And and we went through this period of like, oh, my God, do we take the L? We blew it. We had this head start. We, what's wrong with us? And it was like this like the, the five stages of grief and, and, you know, anger, denial, bargaining, all that stuff. <laughs> and finally then, and like stage six was like, F you, you're not doing this to us. And then like oh, right. six weeks later, I was in Europe and in a different country every day being like, this is what we're doing. We're going to come out with public beta. It's going to be free. You don't need a sick Mac. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was super limited. Could yeah. even crop something, but it, it like lit such a huge fire. And so mm-hmm. I don't know that, you know, mid journey, whoever that people we haven't even heard of, uh, you know, Playground AI, I just saw their new stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, like you guys are like productizing these research papers at a phenomenal rate. Mm-hmm. Um, if that lights a fire, great. The, ultimately, guys, I mean, companies are imaginary, right? They do not exist. Mm-hmm. Adobe doesn't exist. Google, Apple, none of it is real, right? Countries don't exist. They're just people. And and they're, they're yeah. just ideas we come up with to try to get stuff done. And, and it, it kind of works, even though we all know it's crazy. And so... I am, I'm very fond of Adobe and I will try to use that idea to make good things, but, but it is still a means to an end. It is still an idea in service of something else, which is a, a more beautiful, fun world, right? Where people can, can support themselves doing meaningful work, you know? And so if the way we get there best is a lot of people come at it and they compete with each other, they compete with us and vice versa. Great. Let's do it. Let's like, I, I've seen the company rally. Let's do it again. Wow. I, and, uh, like now we talked about how your vision is, but I want to talk about your mindset. So when you were at Photoshop and you were product manager at Photoshop, I would assume a lot of people were using Photoshop. You had probably feedback, constructive feedback, but there was no, I wouldn't call it hate, but they wouldn't, there was no skepticism. Mm. But now with AI, the, the environment is a bit different. The things that you are working on, the things that you are building has a lot of people who are worried about or are angry about at this stage. Mm. And does, the speed of yeah. competition yeah. is also much higher. Does that make a big difference in terms of how you ship product or design product? Because you know people, some people by default, they are not happy about what is coming out. So yeah. but it wasn't like that with Photoshop, right? No, no. Again, like I say, you know, 3D people never never came at us like it's too hard. They were like, here's all these other complaints, <laughs> right? And so with, with Photoshop, I mean, there was some discussion of like the ethics of, of morality. I mean, like... It's like you'd visit a customer who's Playboy and then like, let me show you how I use the liquify tool to like make women's waists slimmer. And like you, you'd look at like a fashion retoucher. And I remember this example of a woman who was wearing these like really tight leather boots and they were tight to the point like the skin on her leg was sticking out the back and it didn't look very nice. Mm-hmm. And they're like, look what I do. I just like move, move the skin. I'm like, well, you've just helped mislead people and say, you're supposed to look like this. And when you wear the boots, you should look like this too. She looks like this, but she doesn't look like that. You know, she's probably super uncomfortable, just wants to wear some, some flip flops, you know, but like, (laughs) so there were like ethical dimensions or like, you know, swapping faces or, or, you know, sort of fake news. I think you're right though. Two things have happened. One, those applications have just become even more accessible, right? So, so like deep fakes and stuff. And then the other is like just a different class of concern, which is like, is this all just fruit of the poison tree? You know, where it's like, yeah, I love that I can like remove the car next to the donkey. But the only way that was possible is like training on the photos of millions of people who, yes, they legally signed an agreement and we can do this. It's okay in, in that sense. But because the tech didn't exist when they shot the photo, you know, they didn't make a decision that like, I'm okay with using that. It's a, it's a, it's a real question. I mean, Adobe is, is trying to be super thoughtful with this. I mean, mm-hmm. ultimately like we are, or we like to think of ourselves as creators, right? A lot of us came to this cause we, we love doing photography or 3d or animation. Like the last thing we want to do is like screw the people who, uh, you know, who are our friends and, and the people we admire. I mean, even if we were jerks, like, um, putting, putting our, the, putting out of business the people who pay our salaries does not seem like a great idea, right? So, so <laughs> even besides like trying to be good people, like there's a 
a, a selfish motivation, right? To, to help creators still get paid. Um, but having said it, it's, it's hard. You know, I, I don't know, for example, all the data sets that all these other models use, but you know, I think there's like data sets like Lion, which are basically scraping the internet. Uh, I saw a thing yesterday where I guess Google has changed their terms of service where basically they're like, yeah, we kind of reserve the right to train on data at scale. And, um, you know, the, the, the way that chat GPT and other things work, they, you know, they suck up the New York times. Maybe that's what was with this whole weird Twitter quasi outage over the weekend. It was, I see people speculating about that. And so, um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it, there is a spectrum, right? I can definitely like everybody agree. Okay. We don't train on like, you know, pornography or something. Okay. Cr- obviously. Yeah. Great. And at the other end, it's like, you could have a world where the only way we train is to get individuals to affirmatively like take their stuff and volunteer it from the jump. Like, so we have a, a training corpus of zero and we start there and we just hope that out of goodwill or, or money people and it's like, okay, but you know, Lion is out there, Stable Diffusion, Dolly, Mid Journey. Mm-hmm. Like, part of what they're why they're so good is they've seen it all, right? They've seen things yeah. that Firefly hasn't seen, and as a result, like you can type in Norman Rockwell or Can of Coke or you know the Pope wearing Balenciaga. It's like, well, we've never seen the Pope and we've never seen Balenciaga, so we maybe we, yeah. we'll like we, we'll like give you an old man in a in a puffy coat, but it's not him and it's not Balenciaga. And yeah. so, I, I I what I hope we can do is. I mean, it'll be an active conversation for, for years, I think. Yeah. I, I hope part of what we can do is give people the tools for them to make decisions. You know, I mentioned the custom training thing. And let's say you really do want to have this specific Pope in that specific scenario, right? Or you are Balenciaga and you want that specific coat. Um, you know, if, if you have the IP, right? Like, why shouldn't you be able to use your IP? You know, like Balenciaga, great. Go tr- train your own model. Put that into scenarios. Uh, you don't need us to do it without uh, consent necessarily. If you can kind of like put the chocolate in the peanut butter, maybe that's more more difficult in some ways. It's also more powerful. And mm-hmm. you know, part of what really excites me is this this notion of of like I said at the beginning, like inspiration, a creative ecosystem. People don't know what they can do because what they can do is different than what they could do on Monday, right? So like, how do we let people know that and then take action? You know, I don't want this world. This this will seem so quaint. It'll be like, hey, remember the '90s, and like we all watched Friends, you know. And it, mm-hmm. at some point, it'll be like, hey, do you remember alt text? And like you would see a cool <laughs> image on Twitter, and you'd have to like click the alt thing and hope somebody put text in there, and then you'd copy yeah. it, and then you'd launch that gaming chat, and then you'd go try to find that bot, and you type in slash imagine, and you'd paste that, and then you'd cl- cross your fingers. <laughs> like that seems insane, right? Like why isn't yeah. it? Oh, look, here's the picture. I click on a link with the picture, and then I have made the thing. Great. And now mm-hmm. from there, I can modify and I can mutate. And, but like, I, I just that absurd number of, of, of steps. Sure. Maybe in, in, you know, doing 10 things to get a swagged out Pope. Okay. In, in the limit, that's not that many steps, but it's, it's about nine and a half more than you should have to do. Right. So, so I think, I think we'll get to a place where as these tools mature and we have the multimodal stuff, you have sketching, you have 3d, you have depth, you have photo references, even if model makers like Adobe don't, take it upon ourselves to put in all of these entities, right? If we can have more of a, you know, connect the dots, like combined tools foundation, that will open the door, you know, to people then using their own judgment and their own IP in, in ways that are, I think, net good. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for sharing all of the thoughts with us. I, I think after this conversation, it's, it's, it's clear to me what Adobe's vision is in terms of the future. Of course, we all understand, and you mentioned this, it's an active questioning of the process because and there is no right or wrong. So fast. Yeah, yeah. There is no right or wrong answer. We're all testing things out. And as long as we try to do it in the most ethical way, and as long as the Adobe's goal is to ensure people can achieve their creative vision in a simplistic manner and also while doing so they can try and test new cool methods to to get to the you know from a to z and yeah what's fascinating is how you guys are doing it again a lot of people thought adobe is just staying behind or not implementing all of these tools and you guys came out and knocked it out of the park so 
we're we're very glad to see the improvements that you guys are making to every single part of every single product and we're going to look forward to all of these tools and we're, i mean this is just a personal selfish thing but i would love to see the idea of the ai assistant entertained within adobe <laughs> totally. softwares like different softwares i i would love to see that happen cuz i know the pain i had to go through to learn some of the different things and right. just how much simpler it would be if I guess like a chat GBT like model trained specifically based on the 30 years of tutorials online and, and, and maybe yeah. even experts at Adobe themselves who have been using the tools. It just would be so... And, and all of cool things come from the users, right? Like yeah. autocomplete right. of memes on Twitter. Like yeah. that, that thing blew my... That wasn't the Adobe thing, right? No. That was users came up with the idea. Totally, of, totally. Right? That, was, yeah. that, was, that was... I think that, that brought a lot of people to Firefly. Did you guys see a spike of users when that thing happened? I don't know. Like to me, because I immediately saw everybody yeah. Yeah. taking memes and doing... That's all when people who were not you know, like us, like AI tech nerds, people yeah. who have never even tried AI, that's when the first moment they were like, oh, this is cool. I, I want to play right. around with this. Right, and exactly. And they don't even want to know what is AI and they don't want to know what they don't tools care. you use. They and don't they care. Right. But they, right. Yeah, but right. that's cool, yeah. Well, and, and that, so what, what you're getting at is, is it, I do think a really interesting phenomenon, right? Like if you, it, if you just present stuff from like the, you've got to boil the ocean, right? You've got to like do all of these things and then, then you can get somewhere. There's this famous saying from, mm. you know, the world of business, like a, a pre professor observed that, um, you know, if you're, if you're selling hardware, people don't want the quarter inch drill. They want the quarter inch hole, right? Mm. They, they just want the result. They just, it's, I mean, I, I think I might've said this to you guys, like, I don't really know how my car works. In fact, I'm sure the more I learn, the more I'm like, oh, I really don't know how my car works. You know, <laughs> like, I have a vague sense of it. Like put in the fuel and there's some combustion and there's some air and there's some, you know, torque and so forth but that's about it like mainly i'm busy i need to focus on like getting my kids to school and so forth and so um but people can see the purpose of a car right again it's like we don't sell saddles like oh i, I can be free i can get a job I, you know no one has to debate that i think with with a lot of ai what what we saw initially with firefly especially is like oh my god this exists what do we do with it i don't know let's what's the first weird thing that popped in my uh, elon musk made of pasta on mars great go can it do it i don't know was it good i don't know i i found from a year ago i said something about tiger woods into in dali and it made me a bunch of um well, there was like one tiger woods the human and then the rest were a bunch of tigers in the woods you know <laughs> so, so i was like okay that's kind of interesting um but but more instead of the fool around and find out like you want to do something hopefully useful and so uh i hope you know, the meme thing is a little bit, it's silly, it's fanciful, but people get it, right? They they kind of know what these like visual references are. And then it's like funny to combine them. And so when I say games, again, I, I have to duck because people are like, wait a minute, we're not going to, we're not doing tic-tac-toe. And I'm like, I don't want us to. What I want is to give people some endpoint that seems like relatable and attainable and interesting, you know? And, and I've always been fascinated by the phenomenon of Snapchat lenses, where, mm. you know, in a, in, in a world where 97% of people won't edit a photo, and if they do, they're just like going to crop out their arm because it looked fat or whatever. Um, these companies have gotten hundreds of millions of people doing something creative every day, you know, and, and, and they're not thinking like, well, it's time for me to go and be creative and I have to, you know, practice the scales on the piano. And it, it's like, no, I just, I, I, I want to, uh, you know, make my wife smile. That, that's like my main yeah. thing, right? And so I just, I hire the app for that purpose. It launches, it's in camera mode. And then there's like, oh, there's something otters. I'm like, oh, she loves otters. I'm like, oh, clip. Oh, great. Now I'm an otter, right? And it's like, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Like, oh, and you know, Maria would also like that and probably my kids and like send it out. And I'm not sitting there trying to think like, I will now make fine art today. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah. here's a creative visual experience. Now, I don't think Firefly, you know, should be doing Snapchat filters, but I do think that notion of like, purpose and focus and frictionlessness is really cool. Mm. And I would love to see a world where it's like, come for the X, stay for the Y, like come for the memes, mm. stay for the tools, you know? Oh, and if yeah, we can yeah. kind of get you in there and then you're like, like you guys already know 3d, most people don't, but let's say we have these literal building blocks in 3d and it's like, there's a creative challenge. And um, one, I, I should tweet this out. One of our designers or actually engineers, um, he was playing with that old, uh, how to draw an owl meme. You got to mind saying, it's like, first step, draw two circles, step. And, yeah. and then like, it's this beautiful owl. It's like, now draw the rest of the effing owl. 
right? But yeah. just as a joke, he's like, okay, I'm going to take a cylinder and a sphere and put them together and say, make an owl. And it makes owls. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't know that the cost of entry could be that low, right? But, yeah. it, but imagine you gave somebody a few building blocks. You know, there's some I did the other day where it's like a torus, right? This like donut shape. Hmm. And I piled a few of them around and I'm like, um, what does that look like? Oh, it looks like a donut. Okay, cool. Bloop. Make a few different donuts. And then I'm like, oh, it also kind of looks like um, an inner tube you know, on, on the water. And I'm like, what if it was inner tubes? And then I was like, oh, what if it was actually donuts, but the donuts were the inner tubes and they were on the water. So I click and go into generative fill. And, and so that was just me screwing around. I mean, I can't do 3D to save my life. But if you gave ordinary people a way to like, here's a little, like a tiny micro creative challenge. Like what, what's the funniest thing you could do with just these three things? You see this on Twitter. It's like, you know, change one letter in a band name and ruin the band. You know, yeah. and people uh, people have a lot of fun with that. And if there was something similar where like change one dimension of this creative composition and then you get X, well, what is X? I don't know the answers. I know I'm talking to a game developer uh, who is friends with the Cards Against Humanity folks. And it's like, just help us understand, like, what are those what are those patterns? Because the purpose of Firefly is not to make memes, but it is it is to draw people in and make them uh more more creatively expressive and capable and if hey if means got you started great you know if like going in the uh the yamaha you know keyboard store and pressing a button and hearing the demo got you thinking oh now i know what this thing sounds like cool great like i i just mm -hmm. i think we can make this virtuous ecosystem of inspiration you know super attainability and then a really gentle on-ramp into as much or as little creative tooling as you want right there's no right answer what I might need from After Effects today and, and five years from now could be different. Could be higher today, could be lower than, mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. If we can pair you with the experience that feels like, hey, I got I got somewhere cool. And it wasn't mm -hmm. so trivial that like just push button, get result. And that's the thing you see with, yeah. with stuff like um uh what was it called? The uh like the AI selfie stuff. It is really cool. Like people are amazing. But it also felt kind of cheap. It's like I take five pictures, now I have two hundred pieces of art. They're basically the same pieces everybody else has. And you saw a spike. Yeah. I mean, those guys made like thirty million dollars apparently in a week, and that was that, right? And and I so, remember the entire social media was filled up. Everyone's profile photo changed for like a week, but then right, it, it, literally it down. Yeah, no, exactly. And you guys asked about like, did we see a spike with like the mean thing? I don't. I haven't seen that with Photoshop. I did see. I was. I, I typed in Mid Journey on Google Trends just to see kind of like what's Mindshare. Like Dolly has gone down. You know, like OpenAI is focused more on on GPT. Um, but but there was a spike. I want to say in like March with mid journey and I'm going to go back and I'm like, I bet that's when the swagged out Pope thing happened because like they had yeah. hit with like 5.1 or 5.2, whatever, like a certain level of visual quality that people believed it was real. And it was like a culturally funny, like a resonant thing. Right. And yeah. it was, it was the, the union of those that made it go boop and it's come down some, but it has still definitely it's way above where it was. So just mm -hmm. as a tool for like making people think, oh, okay, I get what it's for. I could do that. I want to try it. That that does wonders. And again, where they're held back currently, and I'm sure very temporarily, is by um, you know the, the price of entry of this Discord UI. I mean, you don't have to download anything fancy, but you still have to type in a bunch of arcane jibber jabber, right? Certainly, yeah. it will become possible. I'm, I'm I, I would bet in my next mortgage payment on this. You know, when you <laughs> see the shared thing, you click a link, and then like you're in the creation session. It's just it's just yeah. way too obvious not for everybody to do that. It's just a question of getting there and when. You know, it's 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 definitely the way you plan it out um, and, and, and sort of wrote it out for us. That is definitely the way people should be getting into these things. And it's, it's always about finding something cool, finding something useful, finding something funny, and then you go and test it out and then realize, oh my God, there's this whole depth of no, other things I can do. I relate to. Like now, I bet a lot of business owners, I'll make it formal, I'll make it like not casual. A lot of business owners saw the meme mm -hmm. and they were like, what if I can do that with my poster? What if right. I can do that with my banner ads? Yes, mm -hmm. the meme yeah. looks funny, but... Do you believe that this can only happen by creators trying things out? Like big companies could never come out with all these things. It's just one random creator, create one thing, goes viral, and it brings a lot of non-casual application and use cases for this product. Totally, totally. It, it is, um, I mean, I remember like at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, Sundar from Google was talking about telemedicine. And he's like, I forget what the exact numbers were, but it was like, you know, prior to the pandemic, it was like 2% telemedicine. And then it went up to be like 70 or 80%. And he's like, wow. now 
I don't know what the, it'll come down. It won't be 70 or 80 percent, but it also won't be 2 percent. Right. Like it'll yeah. it'll just kind of expanded people's comprehension of what's possible. And so, like you say, I think people are like, well, that's interesting. I wouldn't do that. But it does make me think of X and I would not have thought of X. And in one other example, you know, just with generative fill in Photoshop, um, I'll, I'll be honest for a minute. Like I, I've been admiring like all these control net capabilities for a long time. We haven't been able to ship a lot of that just because we've been so busy scaling and like making sure it's like, oh, you know, on Tuesday, we're going to run out of GPUs. Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> so it's like the same as Instagram when they first launched. Like so many more people used it, I think, than we kind of bargained for. Is this the biggest challenge now? The well, GPU and I, computation. I, I, so, so there's probably some somebody who's you know running a fire drill that I don't even know about, like he, making us look at. I, I don't think so though. I think, I think we're in a much better state. But because of of the need to scale, we've kind of had to put a bunch of things on hold, which would otherwise be really cool. Um, so, so there's all these creative possibilities. I mean, I've been showing examples, just like me playing with like some hugging face demo. Um, and just like, oh, did you know I could like take this, you know, vector clip art and like style it? In fact, when I saw the guy this morning who was like, you know, hey, put a sketch in and get a, a fashion rendering out. I'm like, I know what you're doing. Like, if you're charging nine bucks a month for this. Like, I could just go over to Hugging Face and I could just do it for free. But, but hey, man, shoot your shot. Like, you let, let them cook. Yeah. Um, but uh, somehow I got onto this. I, I, I guess, oh, it was in, in Photoshop with uh, generative film. People have found this like really funky technique where they're using quick mask, which again, like predates layers. I mean, this is like in the, yeah. you, you know, like in the human brain, there's like the, the mammalian brain and the lizard brain. And there's like yeah. some, you know, like little watch battery in the back there. That's like down there. But people are figuring out like, oh, I could do this and I could put like make a 40% opaque selection and then effectively do image to image conversions and i was like mm -hmm. wait wait oh i thought we were still we we haven't deployed any of that stuff and they're like yeah don't worry about <laughs> it we were just like they, people like hacked it hacked it in there right or like yeah. i say the automatic 11 11 thing it's like oh you don't have control that well whatever i do i'm just gonna stick it in there <laughs> right and yeah it's not gonna be like super elegant but it'll work and so um i i get super inspired i mean i'm, I'm sure it's like if you were less paul right and you were like making guitars and it's like geez i didn't mm -hmm. think that like if you you know, fed it through some like weird, you know, vacuum tube calculator thing, like you'd get the Rolling Stones, but you did. Yeah. And um, as a, you know, as a, as a creator, um, that to me is one of the, the greatest joys. Like it, it means you made something that isn't a one trick pony. It isn't. And again, this is not a knock on Snapchat filters, like, but like that's, that's so far on the spectrum of like being an exacto blade. It can do exactly one thing. And it's like, no, we want to do we don't want to do like the full Swiss army knife or the toolbox, but we, we do want something with more flexibility. And then when people surprise you, that's, that's uh, always a delight. Well, thank you so much, John, for everything that you mentioned. I want to encourage every single person who is watching and listening. If you haven't tried any of the Adobe, you know, Firefly tools that are out there right now, go ahead and try them. It's it's honestly going to be one of the most fun times for you to just get into it. If it's the first time you're getting into it, if you've never tried, I would say it's the best place to begin with. And John, we're also going to put down your blog in the links below. And your so Twitter, because his Twitter, he is always posting all the latest stuff that they are doing with Fireflies and a lot of other cool stuff that's happening in the AI world. I think that's a great source of knowledge for people if they want to get stay up to date. Yeah, 100%. Well, you. If you guys are looking for because there's, there's like thousands of newsletters you can look at but, and, and you, you would know this out of everybody else. It can get pretty overwhelming pretty quickly. Sure. But if you want to have a starting point, John's blog would be an amazing place to start with. We 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 found out about it recently ourselves, and we we were just like you know reading everything. So if you thank guys you. are looking for something, we definitely recommend that. Um, again, John, thank you so much. We appreciate all of your insights. And personally, we're looking forward to see all of the cool things that you and Adobe and the entire team who's clearly working extremely hard to bring all of these cool creative tools to us. So we thank you guys so much, all of you guys. And uh, we're looking forward to see more stuff coming from you. Cool. And thank you guys. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, the, the world wouldn't be nearly as fun and interesting without you. Uh, just, yeah, bring in your own curiosity and helping spread the word. I think we all have, mm. have roles to play. And so, mm. um, yeah, it's, it's great to talk to you. Obviously, we want this to be bi-directional. So, yeah, check those things out. Shoot me a tweet, um, DM, whatever. And, um, 
again, that that's how I can help the team do their best work mm-hmm. is just by understanding what, what the heck is going on in the world. Like maybe I only stand, you know, understand like you know, 18% of it, but at least if it's like 18 more than somebody would have seen, then it's a net win. So like, that's great. Please, please, please shoot me good stuff as you see it. Yeah, one hundred percent. And again, just to touch on both of the things that you guys mentioned, uh, tweeting John would probably do the best way. If you guys have some feedback, there's a very good chance he's going to see it. So make sure you go sure. ahead and check it out. We'll leave all the links down in the comment section below. And uh, for everybody watching and listening, thank you so much for staying through. We'll see you guys yes. again next week. Until then, ciao.